auditor. So when I write here communication with the predecessor auditor, what should come to your mind is that you yourself, you are the successful auditor. You are going to succeed this particular in outgoing auditor. So the successor auditor must discuss matters with the predecessor auditor. The incoming auditor should discuss matters with the outgoing auditor. But there is what we call the procedure, procedure for communication, which we must go ahead and follow. Rule number one when you're communicating with the predecessor auditor is to send the client a letter seeking permission to discuss the matters with the outgoing auditor. So it goes like this, request client's permission. Request client's permission, or we call it client's consent, to discuss matters with the outgoing auditor or with the predecessor auditor. Permission to discuss matters with predecessor auditor. So rule number one is here. The successor auditor should send a letter to the client requesting the client to give him permission to discuss with the outgoing auditor. If the permission is not granted, we say, if permission is not granted, if not granted, then the rules are do not accept that client. Reject the client's offer to audit him. So if you come to the client and you request him, I want some information from the outgoing auditor, but he denies you the permission to discuss with the outgoing auditor or the predecessor auditor, then you are supposed to withdraw from that engagement and you reject that appointment. But if it is granted, if granted, that is permission to discuss with the outgoing auditor, we usually say request it in writing request in writing. Tell him that you don't just need a node. So something like, uh, uh, yes, you can go ahead, that is not enough. Tell the client to put that in writing because you want evidence to showcase that you requested that particular permission. Then the next thing, inform the outgoing auditor. Inform the predecessor auditor. What are you informing him? Inform to him that you will be discussing matters with him, predecessor auditor. But the predecessor auditor, on the other hand, even after informing him, because that is inform the predecessor auditor, even after informing him, in most cases you realize that he cannot discuss matters with you, the successor auditor, unless first of all he goes ahead and seek what? He seek consent from the client. So we say, the outgoing auditor, the outgoing auditor or predecessor auditor should, on the other hand, should seek client's consent to discuss matters with you. Client's consent to discuss matters with the successor auditor. To discuss matters with the successor auditor. So once you inform the outgoing auditor, he is supposed to discuss, or maybe he's supposed to, this point number two, this point number one, seeking client consent from the incoming auditor, then informing the what? The outgoing auditor. The outgoing auditor is going to do what? To seek consent from the client. If the consent is going to be denied, if the outgoing auditor cannot be given permission to discuss matters with you as the incoming auditor, then the rules are, you should resign. So if permission is not granted, permission is not granted, the successor auditor should reject the appointment. The successor auditor rejects appointment rejects that appointment. So because we are discussing client acceptance and retention, the rules are very simple. If you cannot get cooperation from the client to discuss matters with the outgoing auditor, do not accept. If the permission to discuss with you is not denied at whatever scenario, do not accept. So do not accept any client when you think that or when you feel that 
he's denying you permission to discuss with the outgoing auditor. But if the permission is granted, then both of you can meet. So you can say, organize a meeting. Organize a meeting if permission is granted. A meeting if consent is granted. If consent is granted. And that is the procedure. So let me just go through this procedure very fast. Number one, request the permission of the client to discuss matters with the outgoing auditor, who we call predecessor auditor. If the permission is not granted, do not accept that client. Tell him you cannot continue. If the permission is granted, request it in writing. Inform the predecessor auditor of the intention to discuss matters with him. Tell him. And then the predecessor auditor, on the other hand, should seek client's consent to discuss matters with who? The successor auditor. If the permission is not granted, that is permission for the successor auditor, no, predecessor auditor to discuss matters with the successor auditor, then the successor auditor shall reject the appointment. If the permission is granted, both auditors are going to meet and they are going to discuss matters that are of importance to that particular audit. That is the procedure. We call it the procedure for communication with the previous auditor. Thank <laughs> you.